If it's good enough for CIA drug runners, it's good enough for me. Hello and welcome to Jimmy's World. On this episode, we're gonna go down 10 airplanes that will do 200 knots that you can buy for under $200,000. Now why 200 knots? Well, I just got back from a trip with my lovely family and we was about 600 nautical miles it was six hours of total flying all together. But it was a long time to be in an airplane with a family, especially with a three-year-old. What can we do to make that trip shorter? Go faster. A couple of rules around my top 10 list here is you need to be able to buy it for $200,000. And that means it needs to be airworthy, ready to go. It could have some squawks and things like that, but not a parts plane. The second requirement is it has to have at least four seats. I know I got five people in my family, but you know, we gotta start somewhere and realistically, frankly, it's usually just me and one other person flying. So maybe we can just have a friend with a six seat or borrow theirs, I don't know. Last but not least, it needs to be a cruise speed, not a top speed of 200 knots, not miles an hour. 200 Coming in at number 10 is the Cirrus SR22T for turbo. Okay, there was a turbo one and then there was the T for the turbo. Uh, this one came out in 2001 and then they had the STC that came out in 2006 to slap a turbo on it. And then the official SR22T designation showed up in 2010. And it boosted uh, the six cylinder Continental that put out 315 horse and you're cruising at a respectable 211 knots. Yeah, you're, you're up there on the flight levels and you're gonna be burning around 17 to 18, you know, 20 gallons an hour. Ramp appeal, yeah, it, it's a good looking aircraft. It has beautiful lines, it's a modern design, sleek flows, I mean, this really is uh, what set the bar for the modern airplane and it has a side yoke just like an f-16 so you kind of feel like you're in a fighter jet there that's pretty cool the ownership costs are kept under control with a ton of carbon fiber a fixed landing gear which is nice the insurance companies like that too and a parachute in case everything else goes wrong you just pull the cord there is a huge following for this airplane and it is the number one top selling airplane since it came out in 2001. I mean, it's, it's huge. Four seats does make it on the smaller side, uh, but you got two doors. So there's plenty of shoulder room for the front seats. It's not pressurized. So whenever you're higher up, you're gonna have to use some oxygen. The useful load's about 850 pounds, which means you can bring your mother-in-law just. And if you top off those 92 gallon tanks, you and your beautiful wife can take your two favorite kids with a backpack for about a thousand miles. Now, finding one under $200,000 is a challenge. They're out there, but they're usually a first generation with older avionics and timed out engines. So, it, it, that, that one's a tough deal, and that's why it's number 10. Otherwise, it would be much further up on the list. Number nine, if you wanna go fast, Mooney has gotta be on the list. And to be specific, the one that hits these marks is the M20M Bravo. It came out in 89, and it's a classic Mooney. It's got that awesome straight fin and that keep it simple engineering. I mean, they, they really take less is more to the extreme. Think Porsche GT3 RS. You know, you, you spend a little bit more money and you get less, but it's somehow better. And, and the suspension on this, this is what, this cracks me up. They don't use a normal strut system or anything like that, like every other airplane. They actually use rubber bushings in the suspension. And the only other thing I know that uses that is the original Mini Coopers. Yeah, yeah, those. And they save weight as well by the seats. It's more like a church pew cushion than it is a comfy 
cross country cruiser. You know, it's, and they're, they're about less is more, and less also means less useful load. So, with about 700 pounds of useful load, eh, your mother in law is not going to be coming with you. Uh, now, you, you just got pretty good, pretty big gas tanks on it. 96 gallons can go on this thing. So, that means you're going to have to take, uh, you know, with full tanks, you and your second wife can go on that trip with some bags. It's got a single engine, that 270 horse like combing. It's going to drink about 18 gallons an hour and it's going to get you there pretty quick with a golf clap worthy 220 knots. And just like the Cirrus, it just makes that $200,000 requirement. Again, it's the same kind of deal. To find a really nice one, you're probably going to be spending more than $200,000, but there are some out there for under $200,000 that will check all these boxes. Now, a little bit better of a deal, harder, more limited model to find is the M20K, as in Kilo, Rocket. And basically what they did was they took a regular 210 Mooney and then they slapped the prop and the engine from a Cessna 340 on it and boosted it up to 305 horsepower and a three blade prop. And uh, you know, hey, that thing will do it too. It's a Mooney, it'll get you where you need to go in a hurry. And these next few are the twins. They have their advantages, but they are expensive to own. You got two engines to deal with. While doing research for this video and for my own next airplane, I discovered $150,000 is the magic number for twins, especially an unpressurized twin. You can find a really nice, like a 310 or um, a Seneca, you know, some of those things. 150 grand will get you a super nice one. You do have the extra cost of the extra engine, so more fuel burn and more maintenance costs, retractable gears and da 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 da, da but you get a fantastic airplane for that price. If you don't mind the extra ownership cost. All right, so back on track here. Beechcraft with their Hot Rod B, the Bravo 60 Duke. This is the Lamborghini Countach of the airplane world. It is gorgeous to look at. It goes like stink, your neighbors are gonna be envious, and it will be broken for half of your ownership. The Duke came online in 68. It was revised to this model that I'm talking about in 74. Uh, you're looking at a pair of 380 horsepower Lycomings hanging off those wings, and you can go all the way to 30,000 feet. Now, it's a little thirsty. She's gonna be drinking about 45 gallons an hour when it's cruising at 220 knots way up there in flight level 30. But I imagine if your last name is Carleone, this airplane is for you. It's got an, that angled pointed nose and that rising tail line. And this thing looks like it's doing 200 knots sitting on the ramp, which is good because that's probably where it's going to spend most of its life. It is known a little bit as a hanger queen and a maintenance hog. And uh, they earn that reputation. They don't make these things anymore, so parts are gonna be a little harder to come by, and there's not a huge following. Uh, so again, the support network is not there with some of the other planes, and I would suggest, if you buy one of these, buy another one so you can have parts. Uh, when they're working, they're fantastic. A bonus tip, if you can find one, they even made a turboprop version of this thing that will get you 290 knots. Giggity, giggity. That's awesome. Number seven. This one is the only pure piper on the list. It is the mighty Navajo. This is called a light twin, and we use that term very loosely because this sucker comes in at 7,800 pounds. It's also the most powerful piper twin ever made. 425 horse each engine on climb out. This sucker, and I had to double check these numbers to make sure they were real. This thing is gonna be drinking 90 
gallons an hour on climb out. That's insane. And 58 gallons an hour in cruise. That is nuts. It's almost twice as much as every other airplane on this list. For some other kind of crazy numbers on this airplane, the tail, the, the, the rear tail, the height of that thing is 13 feet high. That's taller than most hangers. So you can't even fit it in most hangers. That's insane. And then those engines, now they're gigantic engines. They put out a ton of horsepower and they take 18 quarts of oil per engine. That's, you, you measure quarts in gallons at that point. It's nuts. There was a pressurized and a non-pressurized version of the Navajo. The non-pressurized, yeah, they top out at about 180 at 20,000 feet, which is pretty good. Those pressurized bad boys, they can go all the way up to 29,000 feet and cruise at 219 knots. When these things came out, they were using, and I'm gonna you know, start getting a little, using some nerd language here. So they started using a, a, the pressure, how it pressurizes the cabin inside, 5.5 PSI. When most every other pressurized airplane, even a lot of the ones still today, are 4.25 or 4.5, and now some of the newer ones get up to that 5.5 level. Well, why this means something is because the higher that PSI, that pressure, the lower the altitude inside that cabin feels like. So, when you're up at 20,000 feet, if you were at not a pressurized cabin and no oxygen, you would pass out in about 10 minutes because of the lack of oxygen. But with that set up on this Navajo, the 5.5 PSI, you would feel like you're sitting at a restaurant in the Smoky Mountains. It's not bad at all. It's fantastic. They did make a Chieftain version. But that's not the one we're talking about. We're just talking about the standard Navajo version. It seats up to eight. The looks on this one are good overall. It has a fancy cabin class air stair door. I mean, it, it's legit. It's definitely a cabin class airplane. It's not the Cherokee 6 Hoopty. Take off and land in pretty short runways. Even though it's the most powerful Piper Piston Twin ever made, it's also known to be one of the easiest and most forgiving to fly, which is nice. That's why it makes my list is because it'd be a, not a, an insane transition as some of the other airplanes on this list. So that forgiveness in flying a twin really makes a big difference. Maintenance, yeah, it's kind of like owning an Audi. It's not your Mercedes and BMW level, but it's pretty darn close. It is a Piper, so that helps some. But because those complicated systems, those engines, and you got a lot of weight going on, that's going to kill you on your maintenance. But I mean, there's 4,000 of these things made, so there's a ton of parts available. This came in as one of the cheapest airplanes on this entire list, with finding a good deal on one of these things for 150 grand all day long with good equipment and low engines, and you can even find some of them for under $100,000. That is a deal that definitely goes on this list. Sixth place goes, <coughs> drum roll please, to the mighty Cessna 421 Golden Eagle. I mean, I just like saying Golden Eagle because it makes me feel like I'm on a James Bond movie. All right, so there's a ton of these on the market for you know way less than 200 grand. It's that sweet spot of 150,000 I was talking about earlier. They were first made in 67, and then the very next year they made an upgrade and called it the Golden Eagle, and that's the one I'm referring to, which is the 421B, as in Bravo. And that's when they popped uh, some turbocharged 375 horse Continentals on there that will get you a respectable 225 knots, and you'll be drinking about 40 gallons an hour. It seats eight people, so hello, homeschool families. So that's what I'm talking about. You got all those sticker people on the back of your van? This is your airplane right here. Pretty amazing, a 2,000 pound useful load, so you could actually take your entire homeschool family with you across the country and go back to Utah. I mean, it's fantastic. Looks on this thing are a solid, seven I would give it so I mean it's not ugly 
but it's definitely not super hot. It's kind of like girls named Jessica. I mean, you know what to expect. They're white, they're brown hair, freckles, average build, nice personality, down to earth temperament, solid performance, dependable, and they age well. It's a safe bet airplane. You're not gonna go wrong with this airplane. So speaking of safe bet, maintenance. It's right in the middle of the road when it comes to a pressurized twin. There's 2,000 of these 421s made, so you still got plenty of parts out there. You're gonna be bringing it to a Cessna shop or somebody that knows pressurized twins. So mechanics are good to go on that thing. Something that's a little nicer than that B60 Duke, at least a friendlier version of it, is the other offering from Beechcraft, the 58, the 58P pressurized. All right, so when you were a Woodstock in 69, you know, being a hippie, that's when this thing came out. The 58, it's like the 55, but they just chopped it and added two feet onto this thing so you can put your bags in there. You can take your family to the Exumas to go see the swimming pigs. That's what this airplane is all about. The P model came along in 76. A lot of charter companies use these. They still make the airplanes today, which is awesome. That, that tells you the testament of how good this airplane is. 375 horse continentals will get 6,000 pounds of aluminum, oh, or as the red coats will say, aluminium. Anyway, she'll get going and just makes the list at 202 knots and burn about 35 gallons an hour. It's got a thousand mile range, so it would easily make my 600 mile trip. This is one of the nicer airplanes uh, for the base model because it comes from the factory with the club seating and a little table in the back so you feel like you're in a private airliner. It's, it's pretty sweet. Um, you're gonna go where you need to go in style. The, okay, so the plane does have one funky thing about it. It's got the throw over yoke. I mean, it makes sense that one person's gonna be flying the plane at any given time, but and it makes more room for the co-pilot and everything. It's just, it's, it's weird. I mean, it's weird. So most of these, talking about our price, so this one barely makes it on speed and barely makes it on the price. It is a you know really nice airplane. They're still making them today, so I can understand it. The price on these is right at the $200,000 mark. Most of them are gonna be over $200,000. You can still find a handful under that $200,000. And it's, you know, so it's right there at the line. Maintenance, it's a Beechcraft, we're gonna say. It's gonna be a little bit more than the Cessna or Piper, but not as much as other Beechcrafts like the Duke. So, another one, you're not gonna go wrong. That's a solid bet right there on that airplane. Number four is, it, I'm not gonna lie, it's a cheater. I, I put it on the list only because I did find one for under $200,000, but ain't no way I would ever buy one for that, but it would be super cool. And that is the King Air 90. Yep, you heard me right. There is a King Air turboprop on the market right now for $199,000, and in the ad, it even says bring all offers. So if you lowball them, you might even be able to get it for a lot less than that. Now it does, you know, it's kind of higher use here. It's got 16,000 hours and 16,000 landings on it, but the engines are low time. I think they're only like 500 hour engines on a turboprop, so you know those things are good for a few thousand hours. Uh, it, you know, we're talking, it's the early model. I think it's an A or B model. Uh, but this is the gold standard in propeller driven aircraft. We're talking Rolls Royce level here. The only reason I would buy that plane is just so I can start it up and hear the whine of that Pratt and Whitney turbine spinning up and firing. I mean, geez, that is cool. And, and any airport you're at, you're gonna be the man. You're, they're gonna look at you and be like, man, that guy, he knows what's going on. He is the bee's knees right there. It, it's a best, worst decision kind of an airplane. Yeah, you know, similar to the Rolls Royce. The quality, 100%, no questions asked. It is top of the line. And, you, and the inside is spacious. You got plenty of room for all your people, all your stuff. 
Your ramp appeal is to the moon. I mean, it's a King Air, gorgeous, classic. You got all the comforts to make wifey and kids happy. You even, and this is one of my favorite parts, get a toilet, a lavatory seat. With kids, that would almost make me want to buy that thing just because of that. And it's a turboprop. I mean, what else do you need? Okay, sure, it only cruises at 210 knots and it's sucking down a crazy 70 gallons an hour of fuel, but I mean, hey, should I make an offer on it? Yeah. No, no, self-control, Jimmy, self-control. But it's really cheap. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? Our bronze medal winner, Cessna 340. The 340 is my choice for the 200 under 200. And what I love most about this is the price. Yeah, I'm a cheap guy. There is tons of these things out there for under 200,000. I mean, for that price, you get a super good choice of avionics. You can have really low time engines and a bunch of options like air conditioning, the different seating arrangements, and some of these even had a lab seat, just like that King Air I was talking about. I absolutely love it, and it is hands down my favorite all-around type of airplane. Something else I love about these is they're comfortable, not just for sitting in the space and elbow room, but the noise level. They're almost as quiet as that King Air, but they're quieter than all the other airplanes on this list. Uh, at least from my experience. It'll cruise at 220 knots, which is absolutely respectable, faster than some, not as fast as the other ones. And it's a right in the middle at 35 gallons an hour in cruise. It's got a big useful load on it, so my wife can finally take her makeup bag. Just that bag must weigh 50 pounds by itself. But with this airplane, she can bring it with her. And we can take all of our kids, all of our bags, everything and it'll carry it with the fuel enough to get us where we need to go. Maintenance, not bad at all. Uh, it's a Cessna, so it's got pretty standard Cessna systems on it. It's got some parts from the four series and some parts from the three series. So it's kind of in that blend of everything in between. But all that to say, I got to see it when all the panels were off of it and I got to look at the systems and how everything was designed and how everything went together. And honestly, it's not bad. It, for an airplane to work on, it's not bad at all. So I, I would give this a, a, a seven, maybe even an eight on maintenance, especially for a pressurized twin like this. And it's got Continental 520s. I mean, there's a bunch of those engines out there. So parts are gonna be available. They're gonna be, I, I say affordable very loosely after all, it's an airplane. But you can find the parts and you can get parts for it. You don't have to have special made parts or try to go find them from a junkyard or anything like that. This would be number one on my list because it checks all the boxes. It checks the styling. It looks good. It checks the comfort. It's probably the most comfortable one of the airplanes here, maybe except for the King Air again. But uh, it's comfortable. It, the fuel economy, the maintenance ownership, the insurance is not insane. You know, it checks all those boxes, but this is Jimmy's world. So this would be number one on everybody else's list for the 200 under 200, but not in Jimmy's world. Bonus plane. I got you a bonus one in here. All right. So what if I could tell you, you could do not 200 knots, not even 300 knots, but 400 knots for under $200,000. And it's a twin jet engine Lear 24. I mean, that's 500 miles an hour. And I did math and my trip, my 600 mile trip would take less than an hour and a half. Oh man, that would be fantastic. I mean, sure, yeah, you'd, you'd burn in an Iranian oil tanker amount of fuel doing it, but man. It was like a rocket ship. It'd be fantastic. And it would be apocalyptically expensive to own. Yeah, not, that's not including the $1,500 an hour just in fuel burn. Oh man, that's painful. 
And I tried to find out how much maintenance is on these. I've made some phone calls and every single person I asked, all they did was laugh. They just giggled on the other end of the phone. I never could get a price or any, any mention of how much it would cost to keep up on maintenance on one of these things. So, you know, that's, that, that can't be good. That's probably worrisome right there. The insides are pretty small and cramped and it's loud, like really, really loud. So loud that the FAA mandated that these things have what's called a hush kit put on them so that they don't break windows when they fly over. That's fantastic. I love that just for that reason right there. I want to drive my Hummer over to the airport and then hop in this plane and bust out windows as you go. I think I also read that the military or NASA put afterburners on one of these things. I mean, you can't fly it for under 200,000, but you can own it. If you took a plane that cruised at 24,000 feet at 335 miles per hour, could set speed and distance records every time it lifted off, comfortably sat four, and handily carried their luggage, had the performance to avoid the weather or take advantage of a favorable tailwind, and looked like a work of art, you would have the Lancer 4. San Francisco to Denver in two hours, 38 minutes. San Francisco to Los Angeles in 53 minutes. Los Angeles to Lakeland, Florida in six hours and two seconds. When you step into a Lancer 4, you really are taking a giant step up in performance. All right, so when I say experimental, it usually makes people take a step back and say, hang on a second. You're telling me you're going to fly five miles high in the sky at half the speed of sound in something you, you built in your garage? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you. It's going to be fantastic. If you were going to build a plane with these performance capabilities, you'd need special building skills. But that's not true. Like all our kit planes, the building process has been designed to be completed by people with average mechanical skills. The steps requiring professional expertise are completed here at the factory. All you have to do is follow our clearly designed manuals and diagrams. This means Lancer will complete up to 49% of the building process before you start. It conforms to all of the FAA's 51% guidelines. They do all the hard work, I take the glory. I like it. And because it's experimental, that means you actually have options of things you can do to that airplane. And it's so much cheaper. It's usually a half to a third the price of a certified airplane. This thing is a Miss USA if there ever was one for an airplane. And I, I gotta admit, I have spent hours and hours lusting over this airplane. I've even negotiated on a couple of them. However, the reason I didn't buy it is because of this next category, the handling. How's the best way I can describe it? All right, so the, the 421 Cessna was Jessica, the brown haired freckle face girl. The Lancer 4 is Lindsay. She's a crazy redhead. And if you're not careful, she'll go into a flat spin and kill you and anyone around you without warning. You gotta be careful with this one, that's all I'm saying. Uh, this plane is just starting to smile as it passes through 12,000 feet and is typically passing through it at about 2,000 feet a minute still. Uh, at 20,000 feet, it's happy as a clam, and the service ceiling is really limited by the oxygen requirement, not the ability of the airframe. So where the Lancer falls short is cargo. And not a, not a very big, useful load, and definitely not something you'd want to take coast to coast with your kids. If you are in the market for a four-seater, though, bam, this airplane is top of the list, and there's a big gap from this one to the next one. Lancer 4 is the fastest four-seat piston in the world. 
And if you tossed another engine in the back seat, it'd technically be the fastest twin. Whoa, 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 whoa. You get a little ahead of yourself. This is the fastest piston twin ever made and my number one top pick for the best airplane you can get for the dollar, 200 under 200, the infamous Aerostar. The fastest piston twin ever made. An unconventional design, it's got lots of quirks and mountains of personality. The cool factor is off the charts. That wing, it's not a high wing, it's not a low wing, it's a mid wing. Just like the Learjet. And, and now, side note, this was designed to be a jet. It's got a panoramic roof above the pilot and co-pilot. I mean, how cool is that? And you just want to go find some feds to outrun. Even, even if you're not hauling coke or guns or anything, if you can find the Superstar 700 version, that mug will be cruising at a 260 knots. I mean, that's that's like turboprop level of speed. It's crazy. Now, yeah, it's gonna drink 50 gallons an hour when you're going that fast. Okay, it, it's got a couple of shortcomings. A major one being the maintenance category. Yeah. Yeah, that one's painful. Uh, it's like being married to a supermodel. It's really nice when everything is working, but man, it takes a lot of maintenance. The systems are crammed in there together, and in order to fix one thing, you gotta move three things out of the way to get to it, so your repair times are gonna take twice as long. Welcome to going fast. It's gonna cost you twice as much. On the good side of that, the company bought all the rights to this airplane and they're still making these parts. There's not a lot of the Aerostars out there, but the ones that are flying, there's a really tight group community around those, so you do have a good support network for that, which is nice. You know how those wings are back a little bit and they're up midways? And the engines are pushed in as far as they will go without hitting the fuselage. That means those props are about five inches from your eyeballs. So you're gonna get the loudest flying experience you've ever had in your life. That also means it's loud for everybody else. Useful load on this thing, about 1,500 pounds. But because of the small door and the limited cargo areas, if it fits, it ships. Just because you don't have that much room to put anything. When it comes to safety, yeah, it's not good. And by not good, I mean it, it's the worst of any light twin ever made. The quality on this thing, <laughs> I was talking to one of the guys in Utah, worked with Ted Smith when this airplane was being certified, so I heard it directly from him. I was calling around because I had came across this little blurb about the windshield, that the windshield had to be replaced after 4,000 some odd hours. And I'm like, that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. I said, why on earth is that the case? And he said, well, when we had it hooked up to the machine that would pressurize and then depressurize and pressurize and depressurize to simulate the cycles and the hours on the airplane, the machine broke at that 4,000 something hours. Instead of saying, well, shoot, now let's restart the test so that we can get a certification that, you know, is past that, he said, nah, nah, don't worry about it. We're just gonna call it good at 4,000 hours and we'll worry about the details later. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the way this plane is put together. It's, it's definitely an engineer plane because it's on paper, it's really nice, but then it ran into a lot of issues during its certification phases and, and during its life. And I mentioned that the Piper Navajo was the only purely Piper airplane. Well, the Aerostar is, was kind of a Piper airplane because at one point for like 10 minutes, Piper owned them. And then, I don't know, they got into some marriage dispute or something and then Aerostar went a different way and Piper went a different way or something like that. The reason it's number one on my list is because of the overall value. The value, the amount of plane you get for the money is off the charts. I mean, you can find a really good one for 150 grand with good avionics, low time engines, 
in annual, ready to fly, good to go. There is no other plane in the world that has it, this combination for this price. I mean, you got the go fast, you got the look cool, and you always have something to work on. It's the trifecta. If it's good enough for CIA drug runners, it's good enough for me. I'm Jimmy. This is Jimmy's World. Live a life that is full of adventure. I'll see you next time.